Oh my god, here we are. Okay. So, this is Spyro. <laughs> and this is basically going to be my second LP ever. And <clears throat> I'm going to go for uh, a new format. So, I want to sort of emulate a YouTuber that I watch a lot who is uh, Nintendo Capri Sun. And uh, I mean, plenty of other YouTubers do it too. And it, and it's the um, it's the podcast format or the talk show format. So a mistake I've sort of made with any of my other videos is that I focus a little bit too much on the gameplay without adding any sort of personality to the game. Um, so I'm going to try for that. I'm going to try to just pick random topics and do sort of just stream of consciousness. And Spyro is just a game where you run around. Um, that's a vast oversimplification. But um, without further ado, let's start a new game. And I'll let you enjoy the opening cutscene. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Oh my god. I played this game so much in my childhood. And not only this game, but like um the first 3 Spyros and like 3 Spyros after that, 3 or 4, even when they like started going downhill and moving away from the the typical the format that started at all. Um so yeah, we gotta rescue dragons, because uh, they've been all they've all been trapped in crystals. So let's rescue this dude. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. Free ten dragons in the Arctic world. Then find the balloons. He'll transport you to the next world. What about Nasty Lord? I'm going after him. Find dragons first. That's all I can tell you. Why though? Why is that all you can tell me? Is it because... Is it because... I can't actually think of why, because this game doesn't have much of a storyline, honestly. Um, I don't know. I don't care. I, I love the voice acting. It doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, we pick up gems. That's... Well, that's kind of... It's, it's the collectible of the game, and you can't progress without me reading certain milestones of having gems. Um, <clears throat> you can flame things, you can run into them with your horns. That's really all there is to it, though. Pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, um, the topic I wanted to talk about get things started was perfectionism um, so perfectionism is essentially the reason why I haven't made um, any YouTube videos for a long time before this one like um, come here you freak oh my god um, I did some 
game reviews, reviews of Flash games, that was fun. Um, there's nothing inherently wrong with the format either. It was just... Yeah, it was a bit of perfectionism. So, like... I didn't really go into it with a clear idea of wanting to keep the video short and I sort of started holding myself to unreasonable standards like having to present the game in a, in a fair light uh, like doing a completely thorough review while also showing all of the gameplay and that's just those are two ideas that are completely contradictory let's talk to this guy hey Marco if you prove your worth by rescuing a hunt, uh, no, ten dragons, then you may use this balloon to fly to a new world. Awesome. Yeah, so these are the guys that give you um, that sort of gate access to the rest of the game. So we need to do what they say, essentially. Um, so yeah, perfectionism is probably, it's one of my defining characteristics, but it's also... Um, a big problem for me because it keeps me it's it's not a useful characteristic often um, because when you have um, more videos than you have subscribers <laughs> uh, perfectionism is not really something that you should be concerned about uh, instead you should probably be concerned about sort of defining what you're interested in, what you, the why you want to make YouTube videos, um, and so when I was spending a lot of time getting an emulator up and running on my new laptop, um, which is the only reason I'm able to record oh crap, uh, game footage uh, well at all. Uh, because of my new laptop. I'm like, hey, um, Spyro's a cool game. Why don't I try playing that? Um, oh, and my laptop is Windows 10. So, getting a PlayStation emulator running on a, on a Windows 10 machine was not easy. Boom. We just completed the home world. It was a nightmare. Um, so after I put all that effort into it, I'm like, why would I do this amazing thing? <laughs> amazing to me, at least. Um, and then just not, not pursue it anymore? Let's talk to this guy. <coughs> hey, Spyro. Press the jump button twice to glide. Falling from high mountain peaks, plummeting into prehistoric glaciers. <laughs> that. God, I love this voice acting. Um, so yeah, like I, I got an emulator working on a Windows 10 PC, and it runs well at 60 FPS, 59.8 technically. Um, so why wouldn't I, I do something with that? So why wouldn't I, um produce something so that's that's like the whole reason i want to make youtube videos is to sort of share awesome gaming experiences that i've had in my childhood and share what my opinion of gaming is and you have to have a a compelling format to do that in and the only way to get a compelling format is to work at it for a long time Dragonfly following you is doing? Um... His name is Sparks, and he's helping and protecting you. Keep an eye on him and see what I mean. Yeah, so Sparks um, is this Dragonfly, and when he's gold, you have three hits. You can take three hits. Blue, you can take two hits. Green, you have one hit. Um, and then he disappears, and one more hit and you die. Um, oh, and there's these like portal things, 
and you go into the this is like this is the home world or or overworld in a sense and if you go the the other levels are through the portals The artisan's boss is through a portal in the Dragon Mouth, but you are not yet ready, Spyro. First, you must complete one of the other artisan lands. Oh yeah, and so the name of this place, I think I can bring up the inventory. Yeah, this is the artisan's home, and as we enter new more worlds, there's going to be more rows, more entries on that screen, and it'll tell you how much treasure you've collected and how many dragons you've got so far. Um, so I'm going to go for 100%. Um, oh. And there's this cool secret over here. If I can do it without water hurts you, by the way. Oh my god. There we go. Yeah. And here's a, um, a speedway? Flight. Yeah, I think I guess everything has flight. In the later games, they're called speedways, I think. Um, and they're like mini games where you can also get gems. Uh, I usually save those for last. When I was a kid, they were like impossibly hard. Uh, what am I? What's my recording time right now? Uh, haven't gotten the scene switch thing figured out yet. Or my timing. Yeah, so it's only been a few minutes. I guess we can go in a portal. <clears throat> so what I was like, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so perfectionism sucks. Um, and it's it's really silly. because uh, I was super nervous before starting this recording. And really for the people that are gonna watch this video, like the the five people who are friends with me that know I have a YouTube channel and watch my videos and the one or two random strangers on YouTube, it, it serves no purpose at all to try to be a perfectionist about producing video content because not only does it mean that I'm not going to act like myself, which is in fact what I'm hoping people will be watching the videos for, um, It also means that I'm just gonna take five years to upload one video and then be super critical with myself about it. So that's, it's just, there's so many bad things about it. Um, but there are certain situations where it's useful. Let's free this guy. Astor. After you freed all the dragons, pass through this fancy vortex Take you back to the artisan home. But first, let me tell you a story. No thanks. See ya. <laughs> oh my god. So that's so weird. So like that that dragon. I used to think that he was talking about um, freeing all the dragons in the entire game, and that if you came back to this place, he would have something new to say to you. But hearing it again, it's like so obvious to me now. He's like, he wants you to free all the dragons in the level, and then if you get on this thing, it'll take you back to the, the artisan hall. It's literally what he just said. Oh my god, I can't believe. I can't believe I didn't get that as a kid. That's hilarious. I just, I just think I didn't understand it. It's amazing, really. Oh my goodness. Uh, so yeah, when is perfectionism useful? Um, so I find that um, when I'm in, <clears throat> let's see, yeah, when I'm in like a group, there's like a group project, um, I can use my key to open this thing, hold on. Beautiful. Well, you can press a X to skip that animation too, which is fantastic. Gavin, what do you got to say? Watch the dragonfly spiral. The 
His color indicates his power. When we eat butterflies, we stay strong. So we. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, this whirlwind thing is really loud. Um, so yeah, if you're in a group, um, like for example, I have sort of a, a staff role on a, um, an online rhythm game community website type thing. Um, I'm a developer actually. And so having sort of that ideal of how you want things to be, be your primary focus, um, can be useful because a lot of times, um, I find that the people I work with just look for an immediate solution and, um, Although it can be annoying, I usually spend a lot of time thinking, and I'm like, "What is what is the what what about the current situation is not ideal, and how does this one issue fit into the grand perspective of ultimately making things how they should be?" <coughs> Burrow, my friend, how about a hit on gliding? You bet. For the longest glide, press the X button at the top of a jump, and try pressing the triangle button to drop down in mid-flight. Love it. So, yeah, ultimately there are times when, um, when being a perfectionist can be useful. Alright, I think that's a long enough recording. Um, I think I'll end the episode here. And I hit the caps lock button. And I'll see you next time.